In this video, we're gonna take a look at what could possibly be the best budget tablet for emulation under $200. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please consider going down below the video, subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button. It really does help out the channel quite a bit. Now, today we are going to be talking about a budget tablet, and this specifically was sent over to me by Vast Kings, and it is the KingPad K10. Now, they are not only making tablets, they actually make a couple accessories for them, and they do have things like smartwatches, which they did send over to me. This is going to be the, uh, the keyboard case, which is nice because it protects the tablet and then also gives you a physical keyboard. And then, like I said, they also have smartwatches. These are pretty cool. I mean, they are cheap smartwatches. You're looking at 50, 60 bucks for something like this. It does all the basics in terms of what you would expect out of a smartwatch, like measuring your sleep cycle and your heart rate and blood pressure and all that kind of stuff. But we're not gonna really talk about it, but if you are interested in one, check them out. Pretty good products overall, especially for the price point. Now we're gonna go ahead and jump into the bread and butter of this video, which is the KingPad K10. Now this is a budget tablet that retails for under $200. And to be completely honest, I was really not super excited when they reached out to me because I've done a bunch of budget tablets and they are decent, but they're budget tablets. They're not really amazing machines. Now, before I go ahead and tell you guys what's really different about this, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box. We've got our tablet itself right here with some instruction sheets or warning sheets. We'll set this aside for the time being and we'll take a look to see what else comes in here. We're gonna get all of our accessories in here. So we are gonna get a power brick. This is nice simply because a lot of devices are now actually not shipping with these anymore. So it is kind of refreshing to get one. That being said, you may already have a thousand of these, so not really that big of a deal, but uh, power brick included, pretty cool. We're going to have our USB-C type charging cable. We're also gonna have our warranty information, just a little warranty card to activate it. We've got a little user manual, full color, pretty detailed in multiple languages. And then you also have a product overview as well. And it just kind of gives you the information on how to turn it on, where to put in your SD cards and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a peek at this tablet itself. So we'll pull that out and you can actually see right away, it does actually come with a uh, screen protector pre-sealed on there. So we've got it. I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off. This is actually the tablet itself. It does have a full metal body, which is actually pretty nice. And it does have a decent weight to it. It doesn't feel like a cheap plastic tablet. Uh, one thing that I'm not a huge fan of, looking at it right out of the box, you can see that it does have, I mean, they're not huge bezels, but I would have preferred a much thinner bezel if that's doable, but typically, the thinner the bezel, you start getting into a higher price point. Different type of technology that they got to put into those screens to make that work. Now, looking around the device on the bottom, we've got our two speakers as well as our mount for our accessories like the keyboard or the, the cases. We've got our USB-C port right over here. And then we also have a volume rocker right here as well as our power. On the top, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And then we also have an SD card slot here but the interesting thing about this tablet is it's not just an SD card slot. You can actually put in a SIM card for mobile data if this is something that you wanna take with you on the road. Pretty nice, you don't typically see that in budget tablets. And then you don't really have much else going on on the other side, that's kind of it. The back comes in a couple different colors. They kind of sent me the steel blue and I think there's like a graphite gray color that you can buy as well. And then in terms of the cameras, we have a 13 megapixel rear camera and then we also have an eight megapixel front camera, which isn't the greatest quality, but it's there if you need it. These devices are typically not what I would recommend if you are interested in photography. So just a heads up on that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power this thing on and I'm gonna tell you about kind of why I was excited about this device specifically. So I get a lot of requests to cover tablets and budget tablets and things like that on my channel. And I've done a few of them. And for the most part, I'm interested in gaming on them. I'm interested in testing out emulation and things like that. So far, budget tablets are acceptable. They will play some retro games. You're not gonna really get great performance once you hit PS1 and further. When they sent this out to me, I was expecting more or less the same, but to be completely honest, I was blown away by the performance in terms of the emulation. Now this device can do all of your standard retro emulation. If you're running RetroArch or you wanna run, you know, your classic 8 16-bit consoles, totally cool. However, I was really blown away once we start getting into the more advanced consoles. This thing 
can run N64 games at 100% full speed, even at 2X or 1.5X resolution, sometimes even 3X depending on the game. You get really, really good performance. And it doesn't stop there. You can play PSP games, you can play Dreamcast games, and even more so, I was able to even get a few GameCube games running on this thing at near full speed. And I'm gonna show you guys all of that, but we are gonna quickly do a little bit of an overview, and then we're gonna jump straight into some emulation. Now, in terms of the internal specs, this is currently running on the Android 10 OS, and it does have an octa-core T610 CPU clocked in at 1.8 gigahertz. The GPU is a Mali G52 MP2, two core GPU clocked in at 650 megahertz. It's got three gigs of RAM in there. And in terms of storage, we are looking at 32 gigs of onboard storage with SD card expandability upwards to 512 gigabytes. Lastly, we do have a 6,000 milliamp hour battery for a solid seven to eight hours of continual gameplay. I was really blown away by this too. I played a ton of games on this and I didn't even have to charge it out of the box. It is really, really impressive. Now, like I said, I'm gonna mostly focus on emulation for this thing and show you guys just how well it actually plays those games. But in terms of like the operating system, I can show you right away, super snappy. It works really quickly. You kind of flick up. It actually is very responsive. This is by far the best budget tablet that I've received for review by any company that I've worked with and honestly this is a really good machine that I would potentially use as a daily device. Now like I said I'm not going to jump in too much time with some of the standard tablet features. Yes you can run Netflix, you could run Disney Plus no problem it's going to play those with absolutely no issues but you can also hop onto the app store and download a few of the more demanding apps and it can run those with absolutely no issues. For example I did have Asphalt 9 on here, I had Call of Duty, I was even running Mario Kart, Need for Speed No Limit and really it was running them fairly well. And I'm not gonna show you guys Super Nintendo. I'm not gonna show you guys Nintendo. We're gonna get into the beefy stuff. We're only gonna show you the most difficult to emulate devices simply because it can handle everything previous to that. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with some N64 emulation. And specifically, I'm going to be running some of the most difficult to emulate games like Conker's Bad Fur Day, 007, and even Cruisin' USA. Then we're gonna jump into some PSP. We're gonna do a little bit of Dreamcast. And then I'm gonna show you guys a tiny bit of the GameCube and Nintendo Wii. But with all that said, let's jump into some N64 emulation. All right, so as you can see, N64 actually runs like a dream, and you're not really gonna see that on many other devices in this price point. Next, we're gonna jump on to some PSP, and we're gonna get equally good performance. Very impressive all around, and again, I'm gonna try to run some of the more difficult to emulate games. Next, we'll throw some Dreamcast, and unsurprisingly, we're going to get incredible performance on Dreamcast on this device, too.
And then finally, we're gonna jump into some GameCube and Wii games. Now, I'm gonna give full disclosure, not many games are running that well, and you do have to tweak some of the settings, but the reason I wanted to show that to you guys is to specifically give you guys a scope of just how good this device is in terms of performance. So let's go ahead and check out what I was able to get running. And there you guys have it. This is the KingPad K10 by Vast Kings. Now what I'm going to do is probably put together a couple other videos that are dedicated to specific consoles. For example, I'm gonna go ahead and make an N64 emulation specifically on this device. So that way you guys can see all the different games running. Now, if you guys have specific titles that you wanna see, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try to include them in the upcoming video. And I'm gonna do that for N64 for sure, but if you guys wanna see something for PSP or for Dreamcast or even for GameCube, I'm happy to do it. Keeping in mind, GameCube won't be very thrilling because there's very few games that are actually running that I would consider playable on this. But that is pretty much all I've got for this video. Do want to give another shout out to Vast Kings for sending these products out to me for review. If you guys are interested in learning any more about the product, I will leave a link in the description down below. But again, that's all I've got. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys again real soon.